day everyone my name is anna and welcome to cactus caffeine where i share with you my passion for growing cactus and other desert plants over a cup of my favorite beverage coffee all right so what have i been up to sorry for not posting uh, videos lately because i went on a short vacation <laughs> but now i am back so anyway all my cacti are still outside because we are having a warmer than usual weather here in nevada i guess not just in nevada but in also in the neighboring states i heard in, in the news that um other states neighboring states of nevada are also having a warmer than usual fall so for me this is the latest that i've had all my cactus outside for the for this time of the year normally they would all be inside my greenhouse but not this year it is already december um first week of december and all of them are still out our morning temperatures still reach in the 70s and then the night time would drop to the 50s sometimes high 40s but it's still relatively warm and we are setting records so anyway two weeks ago i already prepared my greenhouse because i thought i would be moving them soon but fortunately i didn't have to do that yet so my clean greenhouse is clean like i showed in my last video if you haven't seen that i'll put a link up on the screen and i did put a few plants that were showing early signs of cold stress so they were turning purple so i placed them in here there's my crested myrtillo cactus so this one is turning purple from the cold stress so I place it in here and then those are seedlings aloe seedlings seedlings and uh but yeah the, that's all i've done here so far <laughs> nothing uh major so this is a goni aloe variegata it was also turning a little bit purple earlier but once i moved it here in the greenhouse which i haven't heated yet it's this is not heated it turned back into green anyway um as i was looking at the weather forecast i think by the end of next year we will be dropping our temperature morning temperatures in the 50s so might as well do the move now although i don't need to do it yet but i will do it now before it gets busy with the hustle and bustle of the holiday season <laughs> so this is my plan i already have one rack inside there but i also plan to move this rack this is a four tier rack i used to put a three tier rack inside this one but i figured this one i will be able to put more inside since it has four tiers and then i will move this tall rack also inside in the tallest part of the greenhouse and then also in this video i will be discussing how i heat my greenhouse so just in case you're interested on how to know how i heat my greenhouse i will be discussing that later on in this video so stay tuned all right let's get started okay i got one rack in here and here are the plants that's supposed to go in here or maybe they'll stay there i'll figure it out later time to move the other tall rack in the middle here oh look at this echinocerea spentalophus it's getting too cold for it outside so i will be moving this inside the greenhouse so that's how you know it is getting too cold or stress cold it's turning purple in there this is in the shade so it's nowhere due to the sun exposure that is just from the couple of nights that we dipped to the 30s in here but like i said morning is still warm that's why i'm keeping them outside but look how shriveled up it is so this one is staying here in the greenhouse Okay. 
Oh, this is another Echinocereus pentalophus spot. And this is why you should inspect your plants before moving them inside your greenhouse. Look what I found. See that tiny white dot on top of the spine? That's a mealybug. I mean, it's not a lot. There's another one here. And another one down there. It's not a whole lot, but it only takes a few bugs to start a mealybug infestation, guys. So treat your plants before you put them in the greenhouse this will get a good spray of insecticidal soap i think is enough for now and i will not use alcohol because it's just a few Also, make it a habit to check underneath your pots because if you have mealy bugs in the soil or in the roots, usually you'll find some underneath the pot too. But in this case, what I found are roots sticking out, which is a sign that I have to repot this cactus. But it's too late now. It has to wait for next spring. Like I told you earlier in this video, I'm going to discuss also how I heat my greenhouse. So this is the heater that I use. This is actually a space heater that's meant to be for indoors. But I found this to be very convenient for my greenhouse. As much as I want to purchase those uh, heaters that are meant for greenhouses, I cannot find anything that's small enough for my tiny greenhouse. All of them are too big, so they either heat up the greenhouse too much or when they blow air, they blow straight to my plants and you know, the plants will die. And so I found this very convenient. So this is the one that I found. It's just um in a big box store here. What I like about this heater is that it blows air around. So this vent right here, it blows air 360 degrees around it and when it blows the air it doesn't blow very far so it would go probably about six inches away from this fan so if i put this in the middle of my greenhouse the air doesn't directly blow to my plants okay so there is still a distance between the hot air and my plants this space heater, although it comes with a thermostat and it's supposed to turn on and off automatically given a heat setting that you set, I do not use this because um, since this is meant for indoors, I haven't found any heater indoors that would turn on at say 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about what I want typically my greenhouse to be um, at that temperature. The lowest setting that it would turn on on at least for all the heaters that i have in my house is i would say uh 60 or 65 degrees fahrenheit that's the lowest that it would go so i cannot use this for my greenhouse because that is still too warm you know for overwintering my cacti so what i do instead is the way i set the timer for this thermostat is I plugged it to this is a timer outlet for the wall so I plug this in here and this is where I set the timer so this one I can set what time it would turn on and whenever it turns on it turns on at the minimum um, duration of 30 minutes so I can set the time in here usually at the very coldest part of our winter I would turn on the timer maybe 30 minutes at around 12 midnight and then 30 minutes again after two hours and then 30 minutes again after an hour depending on how cold it, it really is or if it's snowing <laughs> or freezing cold then I would uh, turn this on more often so that's how I heat the greenhouse but usually 30 minutes is enough for it to bring the temperature back up to what I want the greenhouse to be in and then I have bubble wrap around my greenhouse so the bubble wrap acts as an insulation so with the bubble wrap I am able to keep the heat inside the greenhouse for even up to an hour or two it's still fine so bubble wrap is very important to insulate 
your greenhouse. This heater, I just keep it at the lowest setting and then it would turn off automatically even before the 30 minutes is up. <laughs> it would automatically turn off once the temperature reaches the lowest setting here, which is like I said about 60 or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So whichever comes first, either the 30 minute timer or the greenhouse temperature reaches 60, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, this heater would turn off. But like I said, I would normally keep my greenhouse temperature at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't mind even if it goes down to 35 degrees Fahrenheit as long as it is above freezing temperature. Our humidity here in uh, Las Vegas is very low. So I have no problem even though it's very, very cold because our air is dry and all my plants are now, I've stopped watering most of them. In the first year that I've had my greenhouse, I did not have this heater yet. I was uh, using or testing different ways on how I could heat up my greenhouse. So the first year, what I used were lights. So I had um, Christmas lights set up inside my greenhouse because they will emit heat as well. And I also used this one. This is a heat lamp for food so if you look at restaurants or buffets or catering services they would have this over a food to keep it warm so this heat lamp along with the christmas lights they worked in terms of providing heat for my plants this one worked especially if your winter is uh, relatively mild it uh, will provide enough warmth inside your greenhouse my only apprehension about using lights to provide warmth is I wasn't sure how the presence of light at night would affect the plants. <laughs> Supposedly in you know in habitat at nighttime it's dark except for the moonlight. So they're not supposed to have light on at night. So that was my only apprehension about using light as a source of heat. I prefer using heaters because this does not emit light at night and also this will promote air circulation around your greenhouse as opposed to having light yes your greenhouse is warm inside but the air is not circulating so this one provides heat and at the same time proper air circulation all right i have finally finished moving plants inside my greenhouse it took me two days doing it by myself <laughs> so these are what i have left outside there's still a lot <laughs> but um, some of them will go to my garage that's another setup that I do for the winter and then the hardier ones will just stay out here so the next video I will be setting up my garage so let me show you what I did inside so I have a rack here that's now filled with plants and the bigger ones are here i mean it's really packed guys i can hardly move here inside and then i have these this tall rack but the plants in here except for the ones on top the plants in here these are not permanent i might move this in my garage so the seedlings i will move them probably in my garage and then this rack I have the fourth tier rack in here and then some tall ones down here. I mean, I try to maximize every space that I have. <laughs> so this is what I have for now. And then the heater is right here in the middle. I'm not going to use this yet, but next week and this weekend, we are predicted to hit freezing temperatures so at least i am ready before that starts for the top rack right here as you can see there are still spaces in between the pots because i still want the sun to shine through them so that it will reach the second rack here and also the bottom most rack and the way i organize this uh, rack is those that i think doesn't need too much sunlight i kept them at the bottom and then the ones that i think will be able to handle more sunlight even during winter are on the topmost rack 
all right so that is it for the video for today and um let me know guys how is it doing in your area if you're if you're already prepared for winter and um if you have a greenhouse let me know as well how do you set up your greenhouse how do you do your heating in the greenhouse maybe my heater here idea is not the best <laughs> so let me know as well how you do it in your greenhouse so i can also learn from you guys all right thank you guys for watching and until next time bye everyone and cheers